Right, we're going to take a look at two problems using proportional reasoning. So go ahead, read this problem carefully, and then we'll, we'll proceed from there. Now the first thing you'll notice, they give us some time up top, um, and the three weeks and the time. The three weeks, uh, that's just how long you've been waiting to see the movie, so don't, don't use that three weeks in your problem. So be careful with that. Really the question comes down to how long is it going to take us to get to the front of the line. So we can use this, this estimation here. Um, nine people buy their tickets in 70 seconds. So I want to keep things lined up. Whether you use a table, whether you use proportions, it's always good to label things. So I have time on the bottom, people on the top. So people uh, you know, per second basically is what you're looking at. So we have nine people in 70 seconds. We want, if that ratio continues to hold, um, what will we have? Well, 146 people in what time? Well, that's, that's what we want to know. So we're going to make sure we put 146 on the top because that's people and an unknown time on the bottom. So that's where we use our variable. From here, there, there's multiple methods to solve this. You could figure out what you need to multiply uh, the 9 by, which would be the growth factor. So how do we go to, from uh, 9 to 146? Well, we could do a quick uh, 146 divided by 9 equals 16.2 repeating. Uh, in this case, uh, since we're estimating, 16.2 uh, will probably be just fine. So if we're multiplying 9 by 16.2, then we also need to do our, our bottom times 16.2 to keep this uh, as pro uh, proportion. So we're going to type in 70 times 16.2, and x will be... 1,134 seconds. Seconds is probably not the best uh, time to have it in. Let's convert that to minutes. So divide by 60. And when you convert that, we get 18.9 minutes. Or 19 minutes. And if you add that on to what time it is now, right, it will be about 8.10 when we get to the front of the line. Should give us plenty of time. We, we should feel safe about going to our movie because uh, it starts at 8.15. So we should make it on time. Let me back up and, and show another technique that students, students also like. And it comes from as long as you do whatever uh, you do to one side, do the other. So I can multiply both sides by x, which would remove the x uh, from this side and put it on the top over here, and I can also multiply both sides by 70, removing it from here and multiplying it to the, the other way. The common term here for this is cross multiplication. So you'll see some sort of symbol here saying we have to do 9 times the x and then 70 times the 146. Cross multiplication, so we are multiplying. 10,220 we need to solve for our x, so we are going to divide by the 9. That number is still in my calculator, so I'm just going to divide by the 9. Once again, uh, we have a similar answer to last time. I'm going to round that up to 1,136 seconds. Let's take that, divide by 60 once again to see how many minutes it is. Should not surprise anybody. That is about... 18.9 minutes just like last time. So once again we get the same answer so we will still make it does not matter what technique you use. Cross multiplication seems to be a favorite of, of a lot of people but you can also find that factor that growth factor as well. Let's take a look at one more problem. Let's, uh, let's read this and then we'll look at why it is proportional. Okay, so uh, I think a picture in this case will help show why this is proportional. So let me just draw some triangles to represent our tree and our boy. 
Now the sun, sun's angle is going to affect the, the shadow um, proportionally because it's going to hit them at the same angle since it's at the same time. So that's what makes it proportional. So the tree cast a 43 foot shadow and a boy cast a 10 foot shadow but we also know the boy is four and a half feet tall. Our unknown obviously is the tree's height. So once again I like to organize things. I'm going to put height, height of boy, height of tree up top and then shadow length on the bottom. If I keep this straight I can use the same techniques that I used on the last problem. Height of the tree is unknown, x feet, shadow length is 43, and if you go to the boy, it's going to get reduced to 10 feet for the shadow length, 4.5 feet for the height. So similar shapes are just reductions or enlargements of each other, just like a copy machine can reduce or enlarge objects. The proportions stay the same. We could uh, find the multiplication factor in here, this would be real easy. What do you multiply 10 by to get 43? Well, that'd be 4.3. So you could also multiply the top by 4.3. Also show the cross multiplication again. We get 10x equals 43 times 193.5 divide by the 10 x equals so in this case I think actually the other method would have been a little bit quicker but you can see uh, we do get the same answer if we multiply 4.5 by 4.3 uh, we'll also get the same answer so the tree side is 19 19.35 so a little less than 19 and a half feet the tree will be. So there's two problems dealing with proportional reasoning. Just got to make sure uh, proportional reasoning is, is proper here because of um, enlargements and reductions.